Let me ask you a question. Why do we scale our clusters? Do we do that to accommodate increased or decreased workloads? That might sound like a good reason to do scaling of clusters. However, if that is truly it, then why don't we just have the cluster with the maximum number of nodes or the number of nodes that would accommodate the maximum workload? That would accomplish the same result, right? We would not need to scale if we just start with a massively big cluster. Well, we do not do that because it is too expensive. It's obvious, isn't it? We want to use the minimum number of resources while still accommodating fluctuations in workloads. And that means that we need to scale our clusters up and down, but also to understand the cost so that scaling is done in the most efficient, but also cheapest possible way, while making sure that performance of our apps is not impacted. So scaling and cost estimations and cost reporting go hand in hand because one is required for the other. We do one because of the other. And that means that we need a tool or a service that combines scaling with cost reporting. Such a service would need to include costs or the prices of things into scaling decisions. Yet also it would need to provide a way for us to see how much something costs so that we can choose what is worth optimizing. Now, if we bring Kubernetes into this mix, the situation becomes a bit more complicated. A Kubernetes cluster running in one of cloud providers is a combination of different resources. There is the cluster itself, there are node groups or nodes, and there are other resources like external load balancers, storage, and so on and so forth. Now, you might say, hey, I can calculate the cost of all those resources. My answer would be first, probably you can, but let's say that you can, then still there is another question to be asked. Can you say how much of that cost is spent by a specific application running in that cluster? Do you know how much is spent on a specific team or a specific environment or a namespace or whichever way we want to group things to decide whether something should be optimized, whether something is too expensive, too cheap, whether it could be done better and so on and so forth. So, that's the question we are going to try to answer in this video. Can we combine cost with scaling and a few other things? The solution I will explore in this video is called CAST. And now you might be saying, hey, Victor, I already saw CAST. You already explored it in one of your videos. And that's absolutely true. But CAST came up with uh, some new stuff or to be more precise in the past, when last time I explored it, it was focused mostly on scaling and now it has cost reporting. So I wanted to share because it looks very promising. That's a promising combination. Uh, and let's see how does it work? Uh, what do we get uh, from the cost perspective through cost? So, I will not go through scaling capabilities of CAST. If you're not familiar with it, there is the video. Check it out yourself and uh, watch it because that explains the CAST from the scaling perspective. And now I want to explore cost reporting. And bear in mind that what you're about to see is a very early beta. It is still under development. It became generally publicly available uh, not long a while ago, short while ago. So. This is very new, so bear with me. There are some things missing, but that's normal. That's to be expected in a project that is so early or of the feature of the project in such an early stage. To begin with, I can see the cost of my cluster as a whole. I can see how much I spent so far, how much I'm likely going to spend on that cluster by the end of the month. What is the average daily cost and what is the average cost per CPU? which might be actually the most important uh, information over there. Now, for this demo, I have a relatively small cluster that has been running only for uh, less than two days or something like that, a day and a half. So the numbers you're seeing are not huge, 
but still the information is there even though the numbers are tiny 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 we can see the compute that was spent on daily basis in form of uh, bars you know chart and the normalized cost per cpu and finally what we spent in a table like form for each of the days now that's very generic that gives us information about the cluster as a whole but we can dive deeper we can check the workloads or namespaces let's start with workloads just go from top to the bottom and over here i can see each of my applications in this cluster how many replicas i have how much cpu is dedicated to those applications how much i spent per cpu and what is the total cost for that application so far or within the given time range. I can filter it by namespaces or by additional filters like workload type. Hey, I want to see only the deployments or workload name. Hey, I'm interested only in this workload across uh, multiple namespaces or in a specific namespace and so on and so forth. So I can see how much applications themselves cost me and I can filter that information in different ways. And then we have namespaces. I can see how much uh, the biggest namespaces cost and what is the total of the rest of the namespaces. I can filter them as well. And as a table, I can filter the results and so on and so forth. So I can see how much the cluster cost me. I can see how much each of the workloads cost or to be more precise, what is the relation of the cost of resources I'm paying for and utilization of applications. I can also split the costs among namespaces and see how much each of the namespaces or group of namespaces cost me. And that's very useful because namespaces are typically how we organize different environments or different teams. Now that by itself is very useful, but as I said at the very beginning, this is the beginning, this is the start of a whole new line of features in CUST that complement the scaling capabilities that are already, I must say, fantastic. Soon we will have information about the efficiency of what we are using and the total cost. And efficiency, I'm especially interested in efficiency because that's what I really, really want to know, how efficient it is something that I'm running on the whole system and how I can optimize that system for uh, let's say equally good performance but lower cost or uh, the other way around. And then there is a whole new section mixing allocation costs which is potentially actually the most interesting part because it should allow me to filter things based on labels. So I can label different applications no matter where they're running uh, and those labels can define teams or departments or any other groups and then I can deduce how much somebody or some group of people or a department or part of the company is really spending and whether there is something I can do about that. And finally, the last thing missing here is cost comparison, which is in early beta right now. And you can already try it out. I cannot show how it works because I would need to go through the scaling capabilities of Cast AI and uh, allow it to increase the number of nodes and then I would see the data over there. It is still in early beta, so um, we need to wait for a bit more until we see that. And that's what we're getting. We're getting a combination of scaling and cost reporting. I did not explain scaling because I explained it in another video. Again, watch it over there. Uh, but when we combine those two, we get a potentially very, very useful service. So what do we get? What, what are we getting or will soon be getting with the cost reporting in CAST? Well, quite a few things. We can see report of all connected clusters, uh, which can have a cost breakdown per day, week, month, or per type of instances, whether it's spot instance or fallback instance or uh, on-demand instance. We can see the cost per CPU, uh, CPU normalized per cluster or per instance life cycle. We can see monthly spend forecast, how much we are expected to spend by the end of the month. And we can see cost reporting uh, for work Workloads, which is also broke down into different types of workloads. We have the ability to view workload costs 
per certain time period. We have also reports uh, divided per namespaces, which are similar to workloads, but uh, in what they offer, just filtered by namespaces. So what do I think? What's the final verdict? Well, cost, uh, cost reporting is in early stages, so I cannot judge it just yet. As you saw yourself, there are quite a few things missing uh, under development, coming soon, and so on and so forth. Now, cast itself, before the cost reporting, was already one of the best, if not the best way to scale your clusters, at least those running in the major cloud vendors like AWS, Azure, and Google Cloud. Now we have that scaling capability combined with understanding the cost of your cluster, cost of your workloads, of namespaces, costs generated by individual teams, and so on and so forth. So cost reporting alone would not be anything special. I already saw similar tools that uh, provide similar results. However, CAST already has, as I mentioned before, one of the best, if not the best way to scale your clusters in a cost efficient way. So what we're getting right now is a combination of those two um, types of services. This is how we scale in a cost efficient way. And this is how much things cost so that we can combine those two. And that makes it a potentially very exciting service. I'm really, really excited. I, I want to see what will be the final look and how will that cost reporting look when it's fully finished. It's already usable as it is. If you're a cast, uh, AI customer or client, or uh, if you're not, then you might want to become because it's a cool service. And then you can already use the cost reporting as is, or if you want to see first where it goes, then you might need to wait for a while longer until the missing features are added. But in any case, it is a service that you should either be using or at least try it out. There's no harm in that. Thank you so much for watching. See you next time. Cheers.